You know, I've got to be honest with you guys. Last year, I hated the garden. I didn't enjoy it one bit. And this year, we've implemented some things and some systems that have made me be a huge garden lover. We have a pretty big space in our garden. It's about, I don't know, maybe 10,000 square feet of garden space. We don't use every square inch of this, but we, we have it set up to where we're pretty full in this garden most of the time. The majority of last year's garden looked like this row right here. It was just full of Johnson grass, full of weeds, and then there was some crops mixed in. We didn't do a very good job of maintaining the weeds because it is so incredibly hard to keep up with in the state of Kentucky. At a minimum, every few days you're out here and you have to weed, but when you have a 10,000 square foot garden, that's extremely hard to keep up with. And last year we did a terrible job with it, which resulted in me honestly really not enjoying gardening at all. This line right here, is actually a failed potato crop. Uh, I don't know if we got too much rain and they rotted in the ground or what, but that one failed. So we went ahead and planted another one and that one's doing great. For this year's garden, we decided to make some improvements. We decided to invest some money into our, our garden. And obviously you can see we used a ton of landscape fabric, burning holes in it and planting our crops. This is my favorite thing. I know that there's gonna be gardeners out there that are gonna say, well, this isn't good for soil health and all that. And I understand. I, I, I do understand, but for me, we don't have the time to sit in here in this 10,000 square foot garden and weed all day long. We have busy, busy lives and this has made all of the difference for me enjoying gardening. We've also built some raised beds for some more perennial crops like strawberries and you know, our, uh, our herbs down there and whatnot. And I'll give you guys a little tour of the garden once we get to the end of the video, but this landscape fabric right here, oh my gosh. I love it. If you hate weeds, I would try this out. You know, at the end of the year, you can rip it up, you can amend the soil, you can put compost down. That's gonna be our game plan. And then before the gardening season, you can lay it down and replant in it. But of course there's like some crops that you can't use landscape fabric with. Like I'm not gonna go throw potatoes in landscape fabric. I mean, I guess you could lay it on top and then pull it off. But with this system, it's all kind of permanent until the end of the year. And so we've got our potatoes growing here in the ground and we're gonna actually come and mulch this today. And then you can see we've also got our corn growing. There's some corn that's actually popped up way in the back. And in this front area here, we have some planted that we planted a few days ago that'll hopefully pop up here soon. And we're, once those pop up, we're gonna mulch over the top too. And then between these, we have some options. We can do beans. We're gonna do a little bit of a three sisters, but probably not have the beans actually go up the corn. We're probably more just gonna use like squash and, and pumpkin, that kind of thing. So it'll shade out and, and kind of mulch underneath the corn a little bit. So that's the game plan this year. And these are the systems that we're implementing that are making me love the garden. You can ask Ashlyn, I've been addicted to this garden. I think I come out here like at least three times a day if I have the time and check on the plants and see how everything's doing because it's just been so enjoyable walking through here and just being able to walk next to the crops. And there's nothing I love more than seeing this last row because on this last row, you can see every single crop and I love that. Last year, it was like a jungle, it was a mess. You couldn't make out what was a crop and what was a weed. And this year, it looks really nice. When you first start a homestead, it's really easy to just throw yourself at it. And I honestly think that's the best thing to do. It's gonna be a little overwhelming. You're not gonna have systems in place, but once you get used to it and year after year, you create better systems like this, we've created a better system for our garden this year and so many other things on our homestead. Once you start to do that, you tend to work with the homestead instead of having to work for the homestead. That's a big difference when you have a homestead. And when we started, I was definitely working for the homestead. It was kicking my butt. And now that we're, you know, a few years into it, our systems are set up pretty well to where I feel like I'm, I'm one with it and it's not kicking my butt all the time. I get to sit back and enjoy it a little bit more. And these are the kinds of things that in the garden, are gonna make a huge difference on how successful you are because it's not just about how well the crop does, it's also about your motivation for taking care of the crop, for coming out and watering the crop, for harvesting the crop at the right time, all those kinds of things. And if you're not enjoying it, you're probably not gonna have the greatest experience and the crop's probably not gonna be the greatest either. Another problem we had in the garden last year wasn't just that we had a weed issue, we also had a major bug issue. And a lot of that had to do with, it was the first year gardening in this area and that just happens when you have an organic garden. But it was also because we didn't have the motivation to keep up with it. And one of the biggest ones were these guys right here. 
those are potato bugs and last year's crop we didn't we didn't get very good potato harvest which was really upsetting because we like to eat a lot of potatoes this year because i'm out here three times a day we're taking care of it a lot better and there's a few things that we've done this year and are going to do this year that are going to help our pest control and uh, hopefully result in a better crop there is a little potato bug sitting on that potato plant right now and last year they infiltrated us so quickly we didn't have the education we have this year and we also didn't have the systems in place to actually take care of this a little bit better and so there's a lot of things this year that we're doing and the biggest one for the potato bug is that i'm coming over and i'm snatching that guy off and i'm gonna put him and make him drown in a thing of water i know that sounds terrible but these guys are awful and they will swarm your potato plants your tomato plants uh, I believe I've even seen them on our pepper plants and I'm sure there's other things they go after as well But the potato plants and the tomatoes seem to be the thing they like the most aside from walking the potatoes at least once or twice a day and taking off those little potato bugs the adult ones the other thing you're looking for is the little eggs that sit underneath the leaves and when you find those you want to put your thumb into them and squish them and kill those eggs because there's a lot of potato bugs those potato bugs will actually breed I think it's like up to three times a year and that is a lot of potato bugs so if you start early and you get out here and you start to take the adults off and you start to squish the young ones you're gonna have a much better potato harvest you're not gonna be attacked by potato bugs bugs nearly as bad let me show you what those eggs look like so here's a little potato plant and when I'm checking for these I usually will open one side and these eggs are really bright so it's obvious to tell and you can see right there we have a bunch of eggs and then I just come in and it's kind of gross but you squish them and you kill them and you get rid of them. And that's something we didn't do a very good job of last year. Hopefully those systems are gonna be a lot better for us and we'll have a much better harvest. We're also gonna come in and mulch this potato bed because we're hopefully gonna attract some, I don't know, bugs that might eat those eggs or something, I don't know. But mulch is a good thing. Last year we didn't realize that, but this year mulch is a very good thing for us and we're gonna go ahead and do that today. So we've mulched our potatoes and we've inspected for potato bugs and we're looking good, but we still have one more pest that attacks these potatoes and that is aphids. And for aphids, we're gonna use something a little different to fight those. This right here is diatomaceous earth, which I believe is like a rock that they grind down and turn it into a fine powder. But this stuff does really good to soft backed insects. Uh, so aphids, it'll take care of aphids really well. And we're gonna go ahead and take this and we're gonna sprinkle this all the way down the run of potatoes. And like our tomatoes get eaten by aphids and there's some, aphids will attack quite a bit of stuff in the garden. So uh, this will help to battle that and it is a natural uh, occurring product. So, you know, if you have an organic garden, it does work with that. So uh, that's the only thing we gotta do with these potatoes. Let's get to it. It'll be pretty obvious when you have an aphid issue because you'll have little tiny mini holes in all of the leaves of your plants and you also have these little flea looking things. Those are the aphids. We get this diatomaceous earth from our local feed mill in like a 40 pound bag of it for 35 bucks or something. It's super cheap. That's the cheapest way I've found to do it, but uh, they do have it at Tractor Supply in smaller bags. It's a little more expensive. Uh, you can find it on Amazon as well. So I'll leave a link to our Amazon storefront so you can see that. And uh, if you wanna get there, you can check that out. So I'm over here by my cabbage. I'm over here by my broccoli and my cauliflower. And the reason for that is because this is the next issue we need to fix. Last year, we had a, a pretty good harvest, not so much on the cabbage because the cabbage worms attacked that like crazy, but the broccoli and the cauliflower, we did get uh, broccoli and cauliflower. There was just tons of little tiny cabbage worms in there and it was kind of gross. You know, you have to take the time to get them out of there and, you, and then you can eat it. But this year, we are taking action. We're putting systems in place and we are actually gonna be getting some help from our friends at Bootstrap Farmer. They have sent us a low tunnel with an insect netting. You can also put greenhouse plastic over it. You can put a shade cloth, that sort of thing. So we are gonna actually cover these guys with insect netting and we're gonna put a low tunnel and uh, yeah, let's get to it. Let's start building it. We 
got our load tunnel system by Bootstrap Farmer all in. This thing is awesome. It was super easy to work along with uh, Bootstrap Farmer's instructions. They have a YouTube video. I wasn't gonna show you how to do this because honestly, they have a YouTube video that does it way better. So if you wanna see how to build a load tunnel like this, there's a link in the description with an instructional video on how Bootstrap Farmer does it using their kits. You can have shade cloth, you can have greenhouse plastic, or you can have an insect net like we have here because we're trying to protect our broccoli, our cauliflower, and our cabbage from those cabbage worms. So if you wanna pick up Bootstrap Farmer low tunnel kits, great price, great products. They did amazing. They have all these little clips on there that come with the kit just like this and that'll hold the net on there and they have the netting and the in the shade cloth all that good stuff on their website so if you want to pick up any of these products or any seed starting products i'll leave a link down in the description below to bootstrapfarmer.com you know last year i thought that i didn't need these systems in place i thought i could till the ground throw some seed in the ground and we would have a wonderful harvest but that just isn't the case. So if you're starting a homestead, don't make the mistake that I made where I thought that I didn't need to invest any money in the garden or invest any time in the garden. You absolutely need to do that. And not saying that everything needs to be expensive. You don't need to go spend tons of money, but you know, you gotta have to spend time. You're gonna have to at least spend a bunch of labor. And this year you can tell we're doing much better and things are growing great. We are much happier with this garden. We got things like our low tunnel from Bootstrap Farmer with the insect net that's gonna protect some of our crops. We have other things like our landscape fabric, which is keeping the weeds down between our crops. And come on, I mean, it just looks so much nicer when you see a long row of, of green, green beans or whatever right there. So, and then we've got things like our mulch over here and our potatoes. We're working on diatomaceous earth. You know, we're, we're putting these systems in place getting better at gardening so that way the next year we're even better than this year and i'm sure we're gonna have a much better harvest this year as far as potatoes and tomatoes and broccoli and cauliflower all those kinds of things that last year we didn't do too good with so at the end of the day you don't need a ton of money to start a homestead you don't need a ton of money to start a garden but what you do need is time and you know if you're gonna build some raised beds like we have raised beds over here those cost some money if you want to do landscape fabric that costs money if you want to buy straw that costs money i mean aside from all of the seeds and and all that and the water and everything you know nothing is free in this world and it's important to invest in the garden i know it's a big upfront cost to have these kinds of things and i mean we spent a lot of money on the garden this year and it hurts a little bit but as the years go on you know we'll be able to get to reuse this landscape fabric we're going to be reusing this low tunnel and the joy is that we can use this low tunnel at three different times in the year so it can be for insect protection at one time in the year it can be for shade cloth at another time of the year and then you know it can be for uh, uh greenhouse plastic to uh, start things at the beginning of the year or later in the year so we've pretty much hit the end of the video today and we're going to probably do like a major uh garden tour at some point but i figured i'd kind of take you around so you can see what we got going on and what we're growing here so as you can tell we've got a bunch of onions red yellow white all that good stuff and you saw that we had our cauliflower broccoli uh cabbage in there we threw our garlic in the ground in like february i think and typically you want to do it in november the year before so uh we'll see how that does we've got all of our carrots growing in here there's some bare spots but those are getting filled in we have our lettuce, romaine and, and butter lettuce. We've got red ripper pea, we've got black eyed pea. We got some more onions here, just some younger ones. We'll see how they do. And we got our celery at the end here. This long row all the way down with the T-posts and this row, which is about half of it, our tomatoes. We got Roma at the end, we got San Marzano. We've got beef steak and Armada orange. We've got uh, cherry tomatoes. This year we're planting a ton of stuff. We planted a ton of tomatoes. We planted a ton of, a ton of potatoes. We're planting tons of beans, which are what these next rows are here. And the reason for that is because if we have a bad harvest, at least we can make up for it in how many plants we had. Hopefully we have enough. This row right here, this is actually Ashlyn's flowers and she is growing those for our wedding. So that'll be pretty cool. There's like marigolds and I think zinnia, I don't know. I don't know all the names, but they're, they're pretty cool. And of course we got watermelons and, and cantaloupe and then we got a big line of cucumber and there's a bunch of space between all this because all those cucumbers and watermelons are gonna vine out and, and make a mess. So we made sure to leave space between them so it's not too hard to walk in between. And obviously you saw earlier in the video, we have all of our potatoes. We got red and Yukon gold. 
And then right here where this other mulch is, that's a bunch of corn, two different kinds of sweet corn. And then we got a third kind of sweet corn in that, in that brown area right there, uh, all the way down to the end. And that's gonna be the majority of our corn for this year. So we've even got some peanuts growing in this bed. This I'm so excited for. They're, uh, I think it's like a, a Tennessee red Valencia, I think is what it's called. So it uh, doesn't have as long of a growing season. So you can actually grow them in Kentucky, which is awesome. So those are actually starting to pop up a little bit, little tiny seedlings popping up. So hopefully those do well. But later in the summer, I, we're gonna give a big update video once our crops are big and you know you can kind of see how everything's growing. We've got some mint going in this, in this uh, raised bed with some protective layer on the bottom so it doesn't spread out into the rest of the garden. And then over here, we've got all of our herbs. We got some dill, which is an annual, but then we have sage, which is perennial. We got rosemary perennial, and then we got English thyme, which is perennial as well. So we got some fun stuff going on here in the garden. And then we have one more thing, of course. We got our strawberries in this bed, and we're starting to get some pretty good sized strawberries in there. Nothing ripe yet, but they uh, I'm sure we're gonna be eating them here soon. The motivation for this year's garden is night and day compared to last year. Last year, I didn't even want to come out here. And this year I'm out here like three times a day, like I said, but all of these systems are what are giving me motivation. You know, I don't have to weed very much, very little at all. You know, I come and mow the strips here and things like these insect nettings by Bootstrap Farmer and these low tunnels. Uh, of course, like I said, click a link in the description for their products and then major thing is that we're mulching these are the kinds of systems that are really making me enjoy the garden this year and if you know if you got some ideas from this i'm glad if you have some other ideas on on ways to make gardening easier for us and more enjoyable go ahead and, and leave a comment down below that would be awesome and if you enjoy these kinds of videos and you want to see more videos like this you can hit that subscribe button there's a bell notification that you can be notified of every upload and you know we have some links down there to our instagram and our facebook and amazon storefront things like that so if you if you get bored and you want to check those out you can go ahead and click those links uh well thank you guys so much for watching i hope you enjoyed the video i figured i'd give you a little snippet at the end of this video because i know that last week we didn't have a video and to be honest we we're getting really close to our wedding day and we we're, we're having our wedding right here at the property we actually just painted the house so i don't know if you can see that we, we really like it we got to put some shutters up and stuff but we're having our wedding right here on the farm and that's going to be the beginning of june and I, we got family coming in first of june so we'll see if this this may be the last video until we get you know done with our wedding and everything but we'll see we'll see i might get another one out before that but i wanted to give you guys a heads up that we're insanely busy and we also just bought a rental property as well um, in in the town next to us so we are ridiculously busy with our life here uh, our wedding and also our brand new rental in the town over from us so uh, if you don't get a video that's probably why it's not because we don't want to make videos it's because we just we don't have the time so well i hope you guys enjoyed it thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one Bye.